Hi, I'm Stephen Curran. I'm going to be talking about DIDs without a ledger, the use of the DID peer method that allows parties to share DIDs without others being able to see them. This was first presented at the My Data Conference in Helsinki in September 2019. In traditional DID methods, a, private, a, a public entity like ACME would put their DID on a blockchain on a ledger and it's visible to everyone. So in this, in this picture, we see that ACME has registered a DID, they've put it on the blockchain and anyone in the world can resolve it and see what's in the DID doc. Now, let's take Bob. Bob wants to establish a relationship, a connection between himself and ACME. He can resolve ACME's DID and use that to start the connection. To start it, uh, to continue the process, Bob creates a pairwise DID and registers that also on the blockchain. ACME does the same. They create a DID for the ACME-Bob relationship. That's indicated by this AB. And they put that on the blockchain. And now um, both ACME and Bob have a DID for each other that they don't share with any other, uh, any other entity. Both can resolve the DIDs. Bob can resolve the uh, ACME uh, did for their relationship, and likewise, ACME can do the same for Bob. But the weird thing is that everyone in the world can also resolve those dids. So although Bob and ACME will only use those dids for their relationship, everyone else in the world can see them. And that's the challenge we're trying to solve with pairwise dids. Let's take a look at how pairwise dids and the did peer method work. With, with peer dids, we start with the same uh, start. Acme has a public uh, did. They've got it on the on a public ledger on a blockchain, and Bob's able to resolve that, and he can use that to start the relationship. First thing Bob does is he creates a pairwise did, as he did previously. This is Bob's did for the Acme Bob relationship. Instead of putting this on the public blockchain, though, Bob simply packages up the did doc and the did and sends it over to Acme for them to put in their wallet. When necessary, ACME can resolve that DID. They simply look in their wallet instead of looking on the blockchain. Likewise, ACME can create their DID for Bob, and then they give that DID doc to Bob. Bob now can resolve that. And now we have the exact same situation before, except only Bob and ACME can resolve those two private DIDs, those two DIDs that only they will be using. And that's the that's the goal of using the peer did method and using pairwise private dids. So why do we do this? Let's take a look at the of what we've achieved in doing that. First of all, we've got scale. If we think many, many of the dids that in, are involved with SSI are going to be private pairwise dids, then we've taken all of those off the ledger. Um, there's no transaction fees, no operating expenses, no bills. There's no Nothing to be put on the ledger, so therefore no fees to pay or anything like that. The DIDs are simply exchanged between the two parties that want to communicate. Um, no ledger node, uh, no ledger information, no node to hack. There's no common pipes that people can monitor. People might be able to, for example, <clears throat> see that Bob produced the, the DID and put it on the public ledger. Well, nobody is there to observe that happening, and they can't use that to monitor who's using that DID. Only Bob and Acme know or care about the uh, DIDs that they created. They have more privacy. And this, scale, um, this comes back to the scaling. The performance matches the number of parties uh, using SSI and the number of parties in the relationship. And finally, from a regulation point of view, uh, a DID might, by, in, in some consider DID a uh, piece of private data, a private um, identifier for a person. And so there's no regulation if there's no did put on a ledger for Bob. 